Hello! We are reviewing, finally, the last available AI police car for donors to Spark server. You gotta donate $5 or more to access these. I'm not affiliated with them, and I'm not specifically encouraging you to donate. Finally! I don't have to say that ever again. I was getting tired of doing that in every video. So, here it is. This is the Rhino. This is has its whole place in a bunch of Need for Speed titles, I think starting with Most Wanted. I know it's in Carbon, it's in Undercover, it's in Need for Speed World. So here it is. Um, for the keen-eyed or people that just think this doesn't look right compared to Need for Speed World normally, it doesn't. The model is the same. It's the regular Need for Speed World Heavy Rhino. There is a light version, which, unfortunately, no, that's not purchasable for donors. Again, this is the last video, so if I haven't covered a, an AI car that I've forgotten about, it's not available. Uh, at least for the police cars, anyway. There's a little weird thing to hold on to. Moving on. So this car, it took some research on my end because I've never played Most Wanted, and that's just on me. I did play Carbon. So it looks familiar for Need for Speed World players, Carbon players. Um... Most wanted players will know what I'm talking about, and people like me won't, until you've done some research. So what it is, this is from Need for Speed Most Wanted, and it's not the normal heavy Rhino unit. It is a supercharged variant, and the thing that indicates that to me is the wheels being this dark. There's a slim chance I'm wrong, I will admit that, but from what I can gather from various photos and videos... I think the only visual difference with supercharged units that appear in later heat levels are these darker wheels. I don't know what these rings are on the tires. I don't know if maybe that's supposed to be, like, snow tires or something, or, or tread, or I, I don't know what, but that's also not familiar. So, it's the Rockport design. I believe it's the supercharged unit, at least visually. That's, that's how they've redone it for Spark Server. They got rid of the normal design. I don't really mind either way. I've never been a super duper fan of the Rhino itself. It's probably blasphemy for anyone that likes these cars because it's fun, it's big, it's interesting, it's weird. It is a fictional vehicle. Lots of people think it's a like 1999 Grand Jeep Cherokee or something and then other people say it's not. It's not. It's a generic vehicle. Don't assume it's... I mean, yes, it has styling cues from those things, but anyway, I'm, I'm kind of getting all over the place. Let's go crash into something to get our license plate back. We'll turn off visual damage. And I did just give a little sneak peek preview to the one glaring... Oh, wow. Reverse gear is slow in this. <laughs> the one glaring visual glitch with this vehicle. And that would be the driver model. This is a recurring theme now with Cross's Corvette being weird. This is weirder. Looks more bizarre, but I have a really easy explanation for it. Because it's fairly obvious when you look close. There is random texture mapping like reference material all over it i can't really make out what a lot of it is but i know for sure the back of his head is the light textures here and the blue would be the blue the white's the white yellow orange etc it's strange i i don't know why that's the case and that's not normally a, a need for speed world issue but it is on this server with this modified vehicle i kind of wish they'd fix it because it's really strange looking but it's livable so other than that, it visually works. You know, light sirens and everything else. Um, yeah, here it is. So, uh, performance-wise, this is this this vehicle is an exception. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain that here. If you open up the profile viewer, that's its performance rating as I have it. It normally registers at about 600 and something overall with uh, an A-class rating. I've put performance parts on it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that on any of the other cars, because with most of them, it literally reduces their performance for reasons I don't understand. This one behaves in terms of performance modifications like a normal car. It starts at a more believable rating, but you can't actually bring it up here. I think it's more fun with its performance maxed out. It's just faster and a bit more usable in events, races, team escapes, etc. So... I've done that. Again, I firmly recommend you don't mess around with performance parts with any of the other AI vehicles. It just makes them weird. And actually reduces their performance, including changing engine noises and things. Really weird. Can't figure that out. Oh, don't care about it. So, um, that basically covers visually, you know, performance, everything else. Well, not performance, but, you know, performance ratings. Let's get into an event. I don't really know how this is going to work out, whether well or not, in a standard race because it's it's heavy and it doesn't turn very very well so let's get going 
There we go. Tap him out of the way. I love the engine noise in this thing, by the way. I think it's just the same as some of the higher performance Corvettes, like the ZR1. But it's just a great sound. It's lovely. I could be making that comparison up, by the way. I'm not sure about the Corvette thing. I, I just feel like it's the engine noise used for those. So, you know, I would definitely say it's a little bit less competitive in terms of just, you know, single player messing around. You can't use it in multiplayer. You can in private matches. Important distinction there. Uh, he just crashed into the wall. That was a terrible time to use a nitrous. Um, ooh, and... Oh, actually, okay, that worked out okay. So its turning is not abysmal, as you may have expected. But... It's, it's definitely not super snippy-snappy. So, that's something to keep in mind. Um, we will get to its ability to crash through vehicles a little bit later. But for right now, let's just move through our race. We're actually almost done with it. And, uh, yeah, good vehicle, lots of fun. For the most part, it, again, unlike the Heat 3 and 4 vehicles, it does have normal behavior. Um, yeah, so here's that. And let's go grab a Team Escape, which is going to be, I will, oh, hello. Good performance part. It's going to be gobs of fun. Uh, let's go to a short one. I don't want to keep this going on and on and on. Let's go to single player. We'll do all in. I did use this one, I think, for the Heat 2 vehicle, so I'm getting a little redundant now, but that's okay. All right, let's crash our way through a Team Escape, and I'm going to let its uh, ability to crash through vehicles speak for itself. As you would expect, it's a Rhino. It should have a lot of collision force, and take a look at that. And some of this. Oh, oh, I like doing that. I did that in the... Original Civic Cruiser on that video, too, at some point. It's, it's, this car is reasonably fast, especially with those performance modifications I talked about, and it's strong. Use a Juggernaut, you barely slow down for that, so. Juggernaut does make turning a little more difficult, and in this car, that's not a great thing. So there's compromises, but in a way, it, it kind of feels more balanced in that sense. Not that you're looking for a super fair fight in this, it's sort of cheap, but it's fun. This is exactly the same vehicle you see driving around there. It's, uh, you know, again, I already mentioned this, but in place of the regular Need for Speed World Heavy Rhino, it's this supercharged from Most Wanted, I'm pretty sure, unit. So, good vehicle. <coughs> Excuse me, something in my throat. Been talking a little too much today, like normal. Crash through him. And let's blow up a gas station. Boom. All right. So something I haven't gone over or done is standard pursuits for all of these AI vehicles. It's basically what you expect. It's no different than using them in Team Escapes, especially that Heat 1 and 2 Civic Cruiser, the Dodge Chargers. It's it's almost difficult to lose. They're so strong. They're so fast. They handle well, except for a bit of oversteer, and they just crash through anything like anything. So it's, it's fun to use. If you're not very good at pursuits like myself, um... It's a, it's a good little, you know, way to get a, a leg up on that and just crash through pursuits, have tons of fun in it, not worry so much about getting busted, especially if you're doing a longer one. So that's fun. I'm sure this would be interesting to use in a regular pursuit. I might be wary of it, though, because it's handling. You might get stuck in a corner, and if you, you're you waiting for your emergency evade to recharge, you might be in a, in a tight spot. So that might not be the best, but... If you get a hold of these vehicles as I've been reviewing, give it a go in, in regular pursuits and tell me how it goes for you. I think you won't be disappointed. It's a great extra thing to do. Again, especially because these are restricted to single player. If you like multiplayer, you can only do normal pursuits in single player. So it, it's it, you know a nice change of pace. And I don't know why I crashed into that wall. I should probably drive with two hands instead of one, given I'm using a controller. And let's just crash through our last little guys here. I'm getting all teary-eyed, not really, because this is the last of these AI police car reviews. Um, I made a subtle reference in the beginning of this video to what might be coming up next, and I'm also not entirely sure I'm going to do it, so I'm not going to specifically say. Hope you enjoyed this little series, and there will be more Need for Speed World content to come shortly. Stick around. Goodbye.